Now, if you saw last week's video, you'll remember that I broke my GoPro. <laughs> Well, this video kind of carries on from that because although I'd originally intended to do a full behind the scenes video of me talking to camera whilst on location at Brentor, that obviously didn't happen and I didn't get to show you the final picture. So I want to show you the final picture, but also show you how I fixed something within it using Photoshop and that's fixing the perspective because I'd used a wide angle lens. There was distortion in the foreground where I wanted it, but not on the church. So this is how I fixed it. Okay, so here then in Lightroom, we have the final retouched version of the picture where we've got a nice straight horizon line. And also when I zoom in on the church, you can see here that these verticals are nice and straight on the tower and on the far left hand side. But we've still maintained the kind of slope in this horizontal area here, because obviously that would be the case from my position when I was taking the photograph low down and across to one side. This wouldn't be perfectly straight. I would have had to be at exactly the same height and square onto it for that to be the case. So having that slope bit there gives you that perspective that it is kind of over in the distance a little bit. Now, when I originally took the picture, let's just show you one of the images. Obviously, this was a focus stacked image whereby three photographs were blended together. We had a picture where the focus point was on the foreground, then another one on the middle ground, then on the actual church, and those three have been blended together. Now, I actually did all of that and the actual fixing of the perspective of the church in Photoshop. It just made it a whole lot easier. I'll just show you why it was that I didn't fix the perspective of the church in uh, in Lightroom before I kind of sent it all out, you know, and did all the focus stacking. Now, one area you could do that if you wanted to fix the perspective in Lightroom, you'd come to the transform section in Camera Raw. You'd see it under the geometry section. And what we can do is got a number of different options. We can click on auto. You can see there that it's actually making the horizon line nice and straight. But if I zoom in on the church, we can see here that the verticals aren't vertical. And in fact, there is still a little bit of a slope down on the actual tower as well. So that one doesn't work. Uh, so what we could do maybe is look at using something called the guided option. Now to use the guided option, which is where we tell Lightroom what needs to be straight and how to straighten it. We can either click on the little button here that says guided or click on this little icon just here on the left hand side. Either way, it does exactly the same thing. Now, if I click on it, we can then bring our cursor over into the image and you see they get this loop view, uh, loop view now. And the idea is that you're going to click on a part of the straight wall. It's really difficult to do it because it moves so much when you're trying to use it on an object that's far away. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just get rid of the tool for a second and I'll zoom in, make life a lot easier. Then I'll go and get the guided tool. So now look, when I come in, I get that loop view, I can click down and really see close in that loop where I need to be. So we'll say, right, there's one point. Let's just come further down to around about there and then let go. So now it's laid down this kind of like line just here, this guide. So we need to add more than one so that Lightroom knows how to kind of change the perspective. So we'll come over to the one on the left hand side, which I want to straighten as well. So again, using that loop view, I'll click down drag down a little bit, a bit further down the wall to say, right, that needs to be straight. So clearly something's happened. Let's just get rid of the tool for a second and we'll zoom out. Uh, okay, doesn't look, looks different. It definitely, definitely looks different. The walls of the church might be straight, but it's kind of squashed it down now. It really has squashed it down. Obviously the horizon line's not done. We've lost that drama in the church. It just looks so much smaller and squat and, and horrible. So that's not the option. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll cancel that. We won't bother doing that. So I think all we can do here is just use the leveling. And this is exactly what I did in, um, in the original edit. I just clicked on level. So that gave me the nice straight horizon line. Then I dived over into Photoshop, did all the blending, put all the images together with the focus stacking and all that kind of stuff. And then pretty much towards the end of the actual retouch, before I did the black and white conversion, that's when I fixed the perspective of the actual church. So here's how I did it. Obviously, you can see over in the layers panel here, there's only one background layer just for the, keeping things nice and simple. And also to help with the speed of showing you this, I've just kind of uh, flattened all the layers. All right, so we've just got nice and simple. But what I would do, first of all, is just create a copy of it. So I'm going to hold down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and press J just to get a copy. And then we're going to use something here rather than using, and I mentioned it already, if we go to the filter menu, 
camera or filter rather than me using um, the geometry section here which is identical to what's in Lightroom I didn't get the best results of that so we're not going to use it you see there is another way that we can fix the perspective within Photoshop and that's found in the edit menu where we have this perspective warp great tool but I'm just going to set things up so it's easier to use it and I'm going to put down um, some rulers first of all so I'm going to go to view and choose rulers you've got the keyboard shortcut there command or control R and you can see now top across the top of the screen and down the left we've got these rulers that we can use now I'm also going to drag out a guide so if I just bring my cursor over to the left hand side put it over that ruler press down and drag out you can see I've got this line in fact if I just bring it out and let go oh yeah there you go so I can now drag this line out let me just zoom in and I can position it right so that it touches the bottom part and goes it's completely vertical so I can see now look I can see from the bottom of the church as we go up the top tower there we can see how much it's leaning out so I'd need to bring that bit over the other part I want to fix is over on the left hand side here so I'm going to drag out another guide and I'll place that where I think is right at the very bottom I know we've got this gravestone here that's kind of blocking the view of the bottom of it but it's going to be around about there so we can see here also how much that's leaning out I do not want to change the fact that this is sloping that is what gives us the perspective the correct perspective of the church so now that we've got those guides laid down let's go to the edit menu and we'll choose perspective warp now when we choose perspective warp first of all again like every tool in Photoshop it has its own unique options available to it and in the top left hand corner you can see here it says layout and every other option is grayed out at the moment what I need to do first of all then is just drag out this grid so I click down and drag and we get this three by three grid which has got these little discs in each of the corners I'm going to zoom in a little bit further now because what I need to do is click on each of these discs and position it on a part of the straight wall so I'm going to put it right at the top there of that straight wall move my space bar to move the image down and I'm going to click on the bottom one here drag that one in and put it right at the bottom so that's where the straight bit starts and we've got the vertical guide here we can see how much we need to drag it in let's just go to the other side as well because we've got this little bit here to fix I'll click on the bottom left one let's put that right at the bottom where we know the bottom of the wall is straight and let's just try and drag that other one there zoom in and let's just position this one onto the wall where it's leaning out okay right so now that's done this is the great thing what we need to do now is once we've laid that grid out put it into the correct place we then come back to the options bar at the top of the screen and then we choose warp and you'll see that that grid has changed the actual uh, color of it has changed and the discs have changed as well because what they now want us to do is click on the disc and we can just drag over and you can see how now look I'm dragging it see the church moving let's drag it over and it'll snap onto that guide that's a great reason for using those guides because it'll snap onto that vertical let's just uh, move down to the bottom do the same with this one here click on this guide and drag across and it'll snap onto it we'll then come to the options bar click on the little tick icon there uh, just to uh, commit that that'll take a few seconds to process it once it's done it let's just double click on the hand tool in the toolbar just to zoom out and we'll go view and clear guides and now we can see what we've got obviously we've got this top lay here that's been distorted you can see how it's changing the foreground here which is another reason why I didn't want to do this for the uh, overall image I'm going to actually mask this out now but you can see that the church itself is looking good now that we've got that done the church is looking fine we've got a nice horizon line I'm going to add um, a black layer mask to this layer here so I'm going to hold down the option key on Mac alt key on Windows click on the layer mask icon to hide what we've just done okay then I'm going to zoom in I'm going to get a brush with a white foreground color let's just make sure this brush is nice and soft so 0% hardness zoom in just a little bit more and what I'm going to do is just paint with this white brush to bring back now the church where we've changed its perspective so the nice verticals and I'm just not going to paint it. I'm not going to paint all kind of loosely all over the grass area here. It's only the church that I want to change the um, the perspective of, obviously. So let's just paint over here. And paint over these bits. Just bring all that tower in nice straight verticals. There we go. That's good. Making sure that I don't miss any area. 
In fact, if I just press my backslash key, I can see if I'm uh, missing any areas just there. There we go. Cool. Keep on painting. Let's just do this bit down the side here, this left bit, making sure that where there are verticals, I definitely brush over those to make them nice and straight. And we'll just do this last bit, like so. Nice soft brush, helping this to all blend in so it's seamless. You don't even know that we've done it. All right, I think that's about it, really. Okay, double click on that hand tool. So now the only visible part of that layer that we did the perspective change on is the actual church itself. And look, if I turn that layer on and off, you can see how much that really did need doing. When we turn it off, you can see the original church there. Zoom in a little bit more for you. And it does look like it is leaning forward. and It's about to fall over. Just doesn't look right. It's kind of bulging. Whereas now that we've fixed it with these straight verticals, it looks much more pleasing, much more realistic. And we're not going to encourage any of those comments on social media where people saying, why is your church leaning over? It doesn't look straight. And this is a, this is the weird thing. No matter no matter how much I'd kind of use that uh, horizon leveling in the camera when I was taking the photo shoot, you know, it still made it look as if the horizon line wasn't straight. It, the distortion has changed the actual church, but we fixed that now. But the reason I masked this out, I only wanted the church to be fixed. The perspective of that, I wanted to maintain the distortion that that wide angle lens had given me in the foreground here to really make that a dominant part of the scene. So it kind of smacked you in the face and then you naturally then your eyes naturally led you across this rocky ledge until eventually you reached this really old church way in the distance there. So that's just a quick way that you can use an alternative tool within uh, Photoshop to fix the perspective because sometimes the auto versions just isn't going to work. It's going to affect other areas of your picture when really your artistic choice is that you want to keep some of the distortion but not um, not all of it. All right, so there you go then. That's the final image, the black and white or mono uh, picture there. In fact, you can't really see that lights on it. But here it is on screen now. But I am, I am really, really pleased with this. I don't generally do black and white images as a rule, and I've certainly not done any with this landscape and seascape venture that I've been doing since we entered restrictions. But that picture was just screaming out for it. I posted about that on social media as well. Which one do you prefer, the color? or the black and white, and way more people uh, prefer the black and white, so I'm glad of that, actually, because I do as well. Uh, but that's it. That's it, really. I've got some drone footage, which I had intended to include in a, an all-inclusive video where I would have been speaking to camera and stuff whilst I was at Brentor. Obviously, that didn't happen because of the GoPro thing, but I've got nowhere else to share it, so I'll put that at the end of this video. Um, if you like the video, give us a like. It's a great way of supporting, the, supporting this channel. And also, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button but one other thing just to quickly let you know about, in the description part of this video, you're going to see a link to a video which is going out this coming Sunday. So this is the uh, Sunday, the 31st of October, 2021 at 3 p.m. UK time. Last week, I was out filming for a secret project. It's a short film that I've worked on. I've done the filming for it, the editing, the directing, the lot. And it's all for the veterans charity. It's called A Veteran Story. Really powerful stuff, really hard hitting. It's only 10 minutes long, but if you make sure you click on that link uh, in the description part, you can watch that this coming Sunday live. I'll be in the chat room along with the CEO and uh, trustees and team members from the Veterans Charity as well, just so if anybody wants any questions. But the reason I tell you about that as well is that very soon I'm going to be doing a video to show how I actually did it and what I filmed it with. Because apart from the little bit of drone footage with the uh, little Mini 2, which is smaller than my hand, all of the filming kit fitted in there. So I want to show you exactly what I did, just with small amount of kit to create this video. But I've gone on long enough. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.